You know, one of the things that used to happen in the news were those great sign-offs, remember? I mean, not, not all of them, but a lot of the greats over the years in American TV news, they had these little, little taglines they would sign off with. That's the way it is. Good night and good luck. Dan Rather, courage. And so it goes. Good night, Chet. Good night, David. I always wanted it to be good night, Chet. Good night, David. No, good night, Chet. Good night, David. I always kind of wanted them to compete about it. News anchors don't really do those sign-offs anymore. One of the ways I know that I will never be one of the greats is because last night at the very end of this show, I think I got as close as I will ever get to my own signature news sign-off. I didn't plan on it, didn't script it, certainly. It was absolutely an ad lib based on breaking news, happened right at the end of the show. I, I, I think this is as close as I will ever get. His lawyer that he has retained for this Russia stuff, who was with him today at House Intelligence, his lawyer is also the lawyer on Russia matters for the White House counsel, who was the person who was presumably advising Steve Bannon not to talk to that committee today. Having somebody on those two different sides of this story, both represented by the same attorney, that's weird. That does it for us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. That's my sign off. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Complete with cartoonish grimace. Good guess that's my, that's my signature good night for Trump era on TV news. I'm sure somebody has already trademarked that's weird, but if not, we should totally do it. <laughs> Um, the story I was talking there about at, at, at the very end of last night's show ended up being not just a weird thing we noticed in last night's news. It ended up being really important today in terms of what has just happened in the biggest scandal involving this presidency. I finished the show last night exclaiming over the weirdness of this fact. Today, we figured out something that is not weird about it and what is really important about it. All right, a lot of the people who worked on the Trump campaign and in the White House have had to retain private counsel to represent them on the Russia investigation. We noted, I think a couple of months ago, the unusual fact that the current White House counsel, Don McGahn, and the fired White House chief of staff, Reince Priebus, both retained the same lawyer to represent them on the Russia scandal. Now, that's notable for a bunch of reasons. One, I mean, it's plainly notable whenever the White House lawyer has to get a lawyer. Um, also, it's not inconceivable that Reince Priebus, former White House official, and Don McGahn, current White House official, they might eventually have different interests or they might end up being on different sides of an important recollection about an important event when it comes to this scandal. Them sharing a lawyer was already notable before we learned this past week that the same lawyer who was representing both Reince Priebus and Don McGahn also now represents a third figure in the investigation, Steve Bannon the former White House chief strategist, the man who ran the Donald Trump campaign after Paul Manafort was fired and after Corey Lewandowski was fired. I mean, fr from the outside looking in, it would seem rationally that there might be a conflict there, right, for that same lawyer to represent multiple people who represent different interests in this investigation. That said, we can report tonight, because NBC News has learned tonight, that the special counsel's office, Robert Mueller, um, Robert Mueller's office has now advised that lawyer, whose name is William Burke, that the, as far as the special counsel's investigation is concerned, it's fine for him to represent Steve Bannon and those other Trump officials. Now that we know that Steve Bannon will soon be meeting with Mueller and his prosecutors, um, I have to say, though, it's not clear that he'll use that same lawyer to represent him through his interactions with the special counsel. But... If he wants to, if he wants to keep that same lawyer that Reince Priebus and Don McGahn have, Mueller's office has apparently okayed it in terms of conflicts of interest. Again, that's being newly reported tonight by NBC. That's interesting. Well, today in Congress, today at the House Intelligence Committee, the first man to run the Donald Trump for President campaign, Corey Lewandowski, um, and the White House Deputy Chief of Staff, Rick Dearborn, both testified on the Russia scandal. Um, and like Steve Bannon yesterday, Corey Lewandowski reportedly refused to answer some of the committee's questions today. And that's, that's part of how we know that something really important and something really different is going on when it comes to Steve Bannon and the Mueller investigation and the Russia scandal overall. Yesterday, the, the big news we were trying to sort out last night is the fact that Steve Bannon went into that House Intelligence Committee. He refused to answer some of their questions. And then he was immediately, while he was sitting there, hit with a subpoena from that committee to try to compel him to answer their questions. Well, 
That's an unusual occurrence. And part of the reason we know how unusual that is is because today Corey Lewandowski walked into that same committee. He also reportedly refused to answer the committee's questions, but they didn't subpoena him the way they subpoenaed Steve Bannon. There wasn't even word that the committee demanded to have him back in to, you know, ask him the questions in a harsher tone. <laughs> Like previous Trump campaign and Trump administration officials who have refused to answer congressional committee's questions for a variety of reasons. Yes, there were complaints from the Democrats on the committee about that, but the Republicans didn't seem particularly bothered. Why was Steve Bannon treated so differently? Right? A lot of people have refused to answer questions. He's the only one who got subpoenaed by the committee. Somebody is, something is going on with Steve Bannon that is very different than the way everybody else is being treated who is caught up in this scandal. Everybody else in the orbit of this president, from Trump organization to employees, to Trump campaign workers, to uh, Trump administration officials, both current and former, we know of a great long list of them who have been brought in to speak to Robert Mueller and his investigators in a voluntary context. We now know that Steve Bannon was never asked to come in and meet with Robert Mueller in a voluntary context before he was hit with a subpoena from the Mueller office. A subpoena, which was first reported yesterday, a subpoena to Bannon that he must come in and testify under oath before a grand jury. Bannon was treated very differently by Mueller than, he was, than everybody else involved in Trump, in Trump, in the Trump campaign. Bannon was also treated very differently by Congress. Just in that House Intelligence Committee, right? Attorney General Jeff Sessions was interviewed behind closed doors and said he wanted to not answer their questions on the basis of the fact that the president might someday want to assert executive privilege to stop him from giving that testimony maybe someday in the future, hypothetically. That was a strange argument, particularly from the Attorney General. Corey Lewandowski doesn't appear to have given any doctrinal reason for why he refused to answer questions today from the House Intelligence Committee. When the president's eldest son, Donald Jr., came in to testify before that committee, he refused to answer questions about conversations he'd had with his father. He said on the basis of attorney-client privilege, neither Donald Jr. nor Donald Sr. is an attorney. In which one to use the client? But in all of those instances, the Republican-led committees in Congress, the Republican-led House Intelligence Committee, said, no problem with those bullpucky, I mean dubious, even laughable attempts to avoid answering questions, to, to assert some even pseudo-legal rationale for not answering the committee's questions. Everybody else has weaseled out of answering questions and they have not cared at all. Democrats have complained, Republicans have not cared. Then Steve Bannon shows up, Bannon tries the same thing. Boom, here's your subpoena. Why is he being treated so differently? I think we have now figured that out. Here's the story. Last July, July 25th, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort, surprise, uh, appeared on Capitol Hill. And his spokesman announced that Paul Manafort, surprise, had just testified to the Senate Intelligence Committee on the Russian, on the Russian matter. Now, nobody had known that was going to happen before Manafort turned up and his spokesman sprung it on everybody. It, it, it had been kept secret. That was July 25th. Well, that night, after midnight, so it was technically on the 26th, Paul Manafort got his house raided by the FBI. Remember the, the no-knock warrant? Showing up in the pre-dawn hours, taking all his files, taking pictures of all the labels of all his suits and all that stuff. What we now believe about that chain of events is that Paul Manafort had been in communication with the special counsel's office. He had been handing over documents. He and his lawyers had thought they were in a constructive or at least a voluntary dialogue with Robert Mueller's office. That dialogue apparently did not extend to the special counsel's office, knowing that Paul Manafort was about to go to Congress, Congress to give them testimony and to give them documents. When Manafort turned up on July 25th on Capitol Hill, out of the blue, surprise, it appears that the special counsel's office obtained their no-knock search warrant for Paul Manafort's house that day. And then they executed it that night. His congressional testimony, his surprise congressional testimony and that raid on his house that night were apparently not unconnected events. After Paul Manafort appeared before the Senate Intelligence Committee that day, surprising the Robert Mueller team, the Washington Post reported that 
That was just the start of it. Manafort and his lawyers expected to continue to cooperate with the Intelligence Committee's investigation. Quote, Manafort's lawyers have agreed to make him available to speak with Senate Intelligence Committee staffers and members in the future to discuss other issues. Turns over, Manafort turns over notes from Trump Tower meeting with Russian lawyer. Right, so he had, he had surprised everybody by testifying to them once. He'd handed over documents to them. He was planning on continuing to give them stuff, continuing to meet with them. He was also scheduled to testify to a whole different committee, the Judiciary Committee, the following day. Well, you know what? None of that happened. Those further rounds of testimony, those further trenches of documents to Congress from Paul Manafort, those did not happen. Because in a dramatic fashion, with a pre-dawn raid on his home, Robert Mueller and the special counsel jumped in there. That FBI raid with its speed, its swarm of officers, its no-knock provisions, all that drama, that may have been because of a fear that Mr. Manafort would destroy some important evidence that the special counsel wanted, but it may also have been because of fears that Mr. Manafort was starting to give that evidence away to Congress. Right. Paul Manafort eventually was charged with a dozen felonies in October. So we got to look at the evidence that the special counsel put together in their case against him. Given the seriousness of the crimes with which he was eventually charged, given the fact that Manafort's charges came along uh, alongside another Trump campaign official facing an equal number of felony charges and, and two other Trump campaign officials pleading guilty to felonies. I mean, it now seems clear in hindsight that the special counsel's office may not have found it helpful in their inquiries had all the evidence they collected from Paul Manafort been spread all over Capitol Hill, possibly even provided to the White House by the president's Republican allies in Congress, maybe even leaked to the public. Until the special counsel wraps up his investigation, we won't know if other evidence collected from Manafort ended up being part of any other case against any other person who maybe end up charged in this Russia investigation. But Robert Mueller's investigation is very obviously going at full steam, right? They've got multiple felony charges against two senior campaign officials. They've got guilty pleas and cooperation agreements from two other campaign officials. We know from the fact that they obtained a grand jury subpoena for Steve Bannon's testimony last week that they are still working actively with a grand jury. Alongside their ongoing negotiations with the president's legal team to get the president himself interviewed by Mueller's prosecutors. And, you know, I just have to say... In an alternate universe on Earth One, where things retain their rational size and shape, it is <laughs> a huge freaking deal that the former national security advisor is quietly cooperating with the special counsel and has been for months. The special counsel, who we know is actively working with the grand jury, which has already handed down dozens of felony counts against the president's top campaign officials. Right? That's happening right now, that Mike Flynn cooperation. While that is happening, while him and at least one more cooperating witness are, are looming over this presidency. Think about the president's defense team and what they need to strategize, right? The president's defense obviously needs all the intel they can get on what they're up against, on what Mueller might have, what testimony or evidence might be out there that they're gonna need to defend against or mitigate or investigate themselves. To the extent that the evidence and the testimony is going to come from other White House officials, other Trump campaign officials, you know, a lot of those folks are people who the White House has direct access to, right? There's no question, for example, that the White House is going to have ongoing access to and communications with people like Hope Hicks or Jared Kushner or Donald Trump Jr. People like that are not going to tell investigators anything that's going to surprise the White House because those folks are in the White House every day. But then there's Steve Bannon, who ran the president's campaign. He's in a position to know a lot of really high-level insider information about a number of things we believe the Mueller investigation is looking at. White House doesn't necessarily know what Steve Bannon's going to say. They don't necessarily know what he knows. They don't necessarily know what he's inclined to talk about. They don't necessarily know what he would like to talk about. Former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon testified yesterday, mm -hmm. didn't answer a lot of questions, uh, refused to answer some before the House Intel Committee. Did the White House tell him to invoke executive privilege? No. 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 Steve has had uh, very, very little contact with the White House since he left. Um, I, I know Steve a little bit, not very well. Uh, he, was, uh, he, he left the White House in his head, has certainly never returned to the White House, and with the exception of a few phone calls here and there, uh, very, very little contact with the, uh, with the White House. And I certainly have never spoke to him since he left. That's White House Chief of Staff John Kelly talking with Brett Baer at Fox News tonight.
to the extent that it is strategically important for the White House to have tabs on what they're up against, on who's telling investigators what about the Russia matter. For all of the other senior and even semi-senior people who are in a position to know a lot about what happened during the campaign and the transition and the administration, the White House basically has access to all those people. Not necessarily Steve Bannon, though. Not anymore. Especially not right now, after the president denounced him publicly and flagrantly and repeatedly, right? Steve Bannon has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. Steve had very little to do with our historic victory. Steve doesn't represent my base, he's only in it for himself. Steve spent his time at the White House leaking false information to the media to make himself seem far more important than he was. It's the only thing he does well. Steve was rarely in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and only pretends to have had influence. The president then threatened a civil lawsuit against Steve Bannon. Right, this is after Michael Wolff's book came out in which Bannon was quoted saying disparaging things about the president and his family and his administration. Then the president, after threatening to sue him, gave Mr. Bannon a derogatory nickname. Sloppy Steve has been dumped like a dog. I don't think the president understands dogs. The president kept pouring it on. He said publicly that Steve Bannon cried. He cried when he got fired from the White House and he begged for his job. Then the White House press secretary from the White House briefing room said, yeah, Bannon's employer should consider firing him. And then, in fact, Breitbart.com did fire Steve Bannon. And Mr. Bannon's longtime billionaire benefactors publicly disparaged him and cut him off again at what appears to be the insistence of the White House. And then, right after all that, Bannon got a subpoena to go talk to Robert Mueller about the president which is good timing from the special counsel in terms of getting a guy at the moment he might be most inclined to talk, right? But he also got him that subpoena right before Mr. Bannon was summoned to Capitol Hill to go talk to Congress for the first time. Like everybody else in a position to tell tales about the Trump campaign and the Trump transition and the Trump administration, the White House must be very eager to know what Bannon has to say. But unlike every other senior person who is in that kind of a position, who's not already been charged with a crime, the White House is probably not in a position to find that stuff out on the down low from Steve Bannon, because they're not talking to him. They're fighting with him tooth and nail. He's not going to tell them what he's saying. I mean, plausibly. This time last night, we had no idea why Bannon was getting subpoenaed twice. <laughs> once by the Mueller investigation and then once behind closed doors at the Intelligence Committee while they were trying to force him to talk. Well, NBC News reports tonight, based on a source familiar with the matter, that the people who are directly involved in this conflict over Bannon's testimony are operating on a belief that Steve Bannon's subpoena to testify to a grand jury and his subpoena to testify in Congress, these are not unrelated matters. They are operating on the belief that the Mueller subpoena to Steve Bannon was designed essentially to preserve for Mueller, the first crack at Bannon's testimony on the Russia scandal. What happened last night with Bannon being in that congressional committee for 10 hours was not the Republicans on the House Intelligence Committee suddenly being outraged that a witness was not being forthcoming with them about the Trump administration. They haven't cared about any other witness who has stonewalled them. Right? What happened last night with Steve Bannon in there for 10 hours was not a, a big principled fight between Steve Bannon and the White House over how much of his testimony the White House could block by exerting executive privilege, right? The very idea of that is absurd. I mean, Steve Bannon and the current White House counsel have the same lawyer. So, right, if this was really a big fight over executive privilege, what would that mean? That that the lawyer is picking up his phone and saying, I represent the White House. Tell Bannon he can't talk. And then he moves his phone over to his other ear and says, well, I represent Steve Bannon. Tell him Steve really wants to talk. And then back to the other ear, I'm the White House. I say no. Well, I'm Steve Bannon. And I say it's the same lawyer. There was no principled fight going on between two sides over executive privilege between the White House counsel's office and Steve Bannon. If so, the same lawyer would not be representing both of those entities. In the Iran-Contra investigation during the Reagan administration, Congress gave immunity some, to some figures from the administration who were involved in that matter, and it ended up screwing up some of the prosecutions in that scandal. In this Russia investigation, the House Intelligence Committee in particular is led by a Trump transition team member who has pretty openly been working with the White House to advance the president's defense on the Russia investigation. That kind of thing has consequences. It appears that the Mueller subpoena is at least believed by people involved in this to have been designed to stop Steve Bannon from talking to Congress. So his evidence goes to Mueller instead. 
to preserve and protect his evidence for the criminal part of this investigation. Right now, the consequences of there being Trump partisans leading at least some of the congressional investigations into the Russia matter, the consequences of that right now, what it, what it appears to mean about this whole Steve Bannon Mishigas is that the special counsel's office, Robert Mueller, is jumping in ahead of what Congress is doing to make sure Congress doesn't mess up what Mueller is doing. That's what's going on. And now is the part where I look soberly at the camera and intone with sincere fake gravitas. That's weird. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.